Hello, Paul Beckwith again. Um, I'm, this video is a continuation of the previous one. I'm talking about quasi-resonant amplification. I'm talking about patterns of the jet stream that lock into place and cause all of these extreme weather events. And this is a worsening phenomena as the Arctic warms, as it continues to warm, the weather extremes will greatly worsen but it is moderated and te moderated or tempered by aerosols. Most of the aerosols are produced mid-latitudes where the cities and heavy industry is. And if we really clean up our act and get off coal, then particulates in the air, the aerosols will decrease. This will reduce the global dimming effect in the mid-latitudes. So the mid-latitudes are gonna see some warming as a result of this. And this will actually act to reduce the waviness of the jet stream, it, it, to reduce the effect where the temperature gradient, you know, reduce the effect of Arctic amplification. So I'm going to just continue on. Um, no Shackleton this time. He took off. I'm not sure where he went. Okay, so this is what I was showing. Um, I was showing three previous events here. Okay, this is figure one in the paper. Just to remind you, this is the paper we're talking about here. If you just Google this title, you can find this, bring it up, it's open source. And what we saw is there were three events. There was the heat wave in Europe in 2003, where these this type of jet stream pattern got locked into place. Okay, um, and there, there's one node, two nodes, three nodes, four nodes, five nodes, six nodes going around the planet in these, these planetary waves, these Rosby waves, got stuck, but, you know, the, the, here, here's six, seven, eight nodes here. This is a pattern that we're finding. And, and, and when this configuration is set up, you get amplification, the troughs go deeper down, the ridges go higher up, and it gets stuck into place. So we had the heat wave in Europe in 2003, we had the Pakistan, um, tre uh, tremendous rains in Pakistan, drought in Moscow, lost 40% of the uh, Russian grain crop. They couldn't export that year, that event. And this is the heat wave in Texas, July 2011. Okay, so more and more in these, of these events are becoming, uh, are happening, and it's due to the um, effects of the jet stream. Okay, so this is showing, uh, just let's see what other, th th this is showing zonal temperatures. This is uh, some of the modeling data now showing how, um, showing how the temperatures are increasing. And as you go to higher and higher latitudes, the temperatures are increasing more quickly than, than lower latitudes. Um, let me, uh, Arctic amplification, how, okay, so many, many models are run, right? This is the noise of them all. If you take the, the mean of all of these models, you get a trend like this, and then you can fit it to a linear trend line. And what you can see is that the Arctic amplification is increasing um, according to the models as we go out from now to uh, towards the end of the century. Um, and you can see this quasi-resonant amplification fingerprint on the U field. This is the velocity in the zonal direction. So, so the west to east velocity, you can see how it changes with latitude and how the models um, respond. And this is with quasi-resonant amplification. So what you can see is that the, the tendency to amplify and get stuck in these patterns increases over time according to the models. So as we go as we go out in time closer to 2100, the number of, of events where you get this sticking pattern like the three I showed above actually increases over time. Now this shows uh, the data when there's um, the aerosol, um, okay, so th this is the, uh, th this is aerosol effects only, and this is when you include everything just to, to, to show 
that the aerosols actually make a big difference. As we go out in time, as we decrease the aerosols, the, um, the temperature anomaly, as you go to higher and higher latitudes, uh, these are the latitudes here, it actually drops off, it decreases. Um, because of aerosols in the mid-latitudes cause warming and that counters the Arctic amplification effect. So if you look at the uh, total effect here of Arctic amplification, um, it initially increases here, but then if the aerosols come to dominate, it can actually uh, decrease. So it's not a monotonic uh, sort of change. And this is just showing, you know, if you use all of the models together, you can get this. This is what happens if you get some, if, if aerosol effects can, can dominate. And this is what happens if the, um, if the Arctic amplification effects dominate. These are just some other figures um, that are in the paper. So this is, um, this is a number of events from quasi-resonant amplification. Um, all the models are run. This is the mean of the models increasing. Historical data from, from uh, Goddard Institute of Space Sense, their temperature, and then actual QRA events. You can't really see it too well um, there. And this is what happens um, without the aerosol being considered, and this is what happens with the aerosols uh, being considered. Okay, so the uh so so let's kind of let's go to back to the paper here okay and see some of the key things here so basically this paper is looking at you know it's asking okay we're having a series of persistent extreme and costly summer weather events we've had them over the past decade and a half and that includes the 2003 European heat wave, the 2010 Pakistan flood, Russian heat wave, 2011 Texas drought, 2013 European floods, 2015 California wildfires, 2016 Alberta wildfires. We can say 2018 California wildfires again. We can say European flood. I mean, the, the, the um, extreme weather events are taking off like a rocket. Okay, so... The scientific literature is always behind, but it's trying to catch up and it's looking at the relationship between anthropogenic climate change and warm season weather extremes. Okay, uh, so it's looking a lot at the, so, so here's some, a couple of things. Some of the w summer weather extremes are increasing because of straightforward thermodynamic processes. Okay, basically we're getting warmer temperature so that shifts the bell curve of events, if you like. So it increases, the bell curve moves over to the right. There's more area under the curve for heat, high temperatures, heat waves. So the frequency of heat waves increases. The warming atmosphere is causing more evaporation, more water vapor in the atmosphere. So there's more intense precipitation events. But there's more going on beyond that. The atmospheric dynamics, the jet streams are changing, and it's necessary to look at the dynamics to see how things are changing and causing these persistent extreme weather events. So this is jet streams getting stuck. Okay, so it talks about previous work here. These atmospheric Rosby or planetary waves can be implicated. Um, so people started looking at setting up models to try to see you know, why these waves would be stationary or stuck. And it behaves just like waves in a waveguide. So think of light going through an optical fiber, for example. The light is guided through the fiber. Very little of the light is lost because of the geometry of the fiber compared to the wavelength of the light. While the, on the Earth, we have exactly the same type of thing happening. We can get these waveguide-like confined jet stream waves forming stationary, quasi-stationary planetary waves. Uh, the, the wave number range is generally six to eight. And these waves become effectively trapped between two different latitudes depending on the meridional profile of the jet. And so that we get some resonance, some, some uh, wave nature uh, that is preferred 
Okay, so we get the tr ridges and troughs trapped in place. Now it talks about some of the forcing that excites these waves, right? And it talks about the orographic effects. So this is the mountains, for example. You know, they can get the jet streams going in a certain position and then they get amplified in these position and then stuck by this quasi-resonant amplification effect, which is primarily because of the um, Arctic oscillation effect, the temperature difference between the high latitudes and low latitudes is changing. But there's also thermal forcing effects. So temperatures being quite different close to each other and that can trigger the jet stream and that can trigger things. So think of, think of land-ocean contrast, for example. Ocean's colder, land warmer, right? You get a large temperature difference there. You get the winds generated. You know, and then they're amplified by the QRA effect, and then they can get stuck into place. So the paper goes into the details about how this might happen. So you have equations to describe the, the nature of the movement of winds, the stream function, the, move, the flow of the air in the jet streams, for example, as a function of latitude phi and longitude lambda. Okay, so there's an equation here. We have the thermal forcing, the orographic forcing. This is friction, which dampens it. That's on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, you have this. There is a typo here. This is a latitude phi. So you have all these coast terms, these geometry terms. A is the Earth's radius. This is the Coriolis force. The, uh, the Coriolis force is generated. That's the component. That's the term. Omega is the Earth's rotational angular velocity. It generates a Coriolis force. T is time. Anyway, the solution is a wave equation, e to the i, uh, kz, kx plus ly minus omega t. Okay, so this is a wave equation, a wave solution. e to the i theta is cos theta plus i sine theta. So you get, so you get sinusoidal way. The real, the real part is the cos of, of, of this argument and um, plus i imaginary times the sine of this argument. So you get these sinusoidal equations. For stationary waves, you set omega to zero. So there's no time, get rid of the time dependence. If omega is zero, there's no time dependence. You get a stationary solution. You can solve for the different parameters. And what you find is that the whole thing behaves like a waveguide. You get this wave that is basically trapped between two different latitudes, okay? So that's the behavior that pops out. Um, and that's basically the behavior that pops out, okay? So what they did is previous papers started, and I showed you this figure. This is the first figure here showing the three different events and the type of um, jet stream movement, the type of wind uh, motion at 300 millibar, the level, level of the jet streams. So you get this type of thing that's happening, and then you can look at how it's going to proceed moving out, and it looks like aerosols may dampen the effect. Of course, the, you know, but the, it looks like the most, what's going to happen, we're going to lose Arctic sea ice um, in a few years, and then the, um, that's going to, we're, we're no, there's no way that the aerosols are going to be depleted significantly before that happens. Okay, uh, and then the paper looks at what happens with the aerosols, with no aerosols, and stuff like that. Um, so basically, um, this, is, this work is different. Some previous work, uh, man was involved in this paper in 2017. It uh, demonstrated that greenhouse gas warming was in, we're getting an Arctic amplification. We're getting this quasi-resonant amplification. It's affecting these events. Now they put it into models and they tried to look at how things would look going out into the future. And basically, to make a long story short, is when you come to this equation here, the wave equation, okay, um, you get uh, you get this uh, the, these these derivatives here. When you have errors, and there's always going to be errors, the derivative and the second derivative blow up. It becomes very difficult to model this. So what you do is you look at the temperature and you see how many times this is happening. So in summary, um, you know, Arctic amplification. As the Arctic warms, the, the waviness and the jets are going to get stuck a lot more and more persistent. 
That's going to be moderated by reduction of aerosols, but the aerosols 